Here's a big knock to left field and a caught there out in left field. What a play! Hauled in by Mullen and reeled back into the infield. And a force out at third. They throw into third base. Joni Ernst did not retreat for the tag up. They throw into Greg Stanton. A double play, John. It's a double play to end the inning as Ernst failed to get back to base. What a catch by Kevin Mullen. Basket catch to keep it from falling. What could have been big runs for the Republicans is a double play. Wow, what a play. Who needs the Major League Baseball All-Star Game when you have All-Star plays like that one in the Congressional Baseball Game? This year, freshman Democratic representative from California Kevin Mullen made that All-Star catch playing left field. The Big League All-Star Game is approaching, but you might not be interested. You might want good, alternate, yet baseball-themed programming. Well, here's one idea. Listen to the rest of this episode of C-SPAN's The Weekly. It's the top moments from C-SPAN's coverage of the Congressional Baseball game over the years, both on and off the field. Ladies and gentlemen, let's play baseball. The game got off to an unfortunate start. Congressman Michael Oxley, a Republican from Ohio, broke his arm on the first play. An unfortunate start indeed for the 1994 Congressional Baseball game when leadoff hitter Sherrod Brown, a Democrat from Ohio and, yes, the current senator, ran into fellow Ohio congressman and first baseman and Republican Mike Oxley. Unfortunate then, but now a fortunate way to start this podcast. Baseball and Congress are typically from opposite worlds. With apologies to George Carlin, Congress has filibusters. Baseball has a pitch clock. Congress has quorum calls. Baseball has rain delays. In baseball, they can toss you out for saying bad things. In Congress, they take down your words. At a baseball park, you can get a hot dog if you spend a lot of money. Congress won't allow food in the chambers, not even a sandwich. But once a year, both worlds collide, like Congressman Brown and Oxley, at the Congressional Baseball Game. We started with 1994 and a broken arm. Let's fast forward to 2021 and a broken record. President Biden is in attendance at Nationalist Park. Representative Greg Stubbe, Republican of Florida, is at bat. And now the president taking a moment with the Republicans. Earlier he was on the Democratic side uh, when the Democrats were trying to get caught up. Wow, this is a long Greg ball. Stubbe with the Greg first Stubbe. pitch and the first swing is going to be a home run. Stubbe out of the ballpark into the left field bleachers. Stubbe with the very first offering from Pete Aguilar, swings and sends it to left field and out. While everybody's milling with the president, they played baseball, and Stubbe <laughs> wants to bring the attention back to the field. Absolutely. I believe that is the first out-of-the-park home run in this game in more than 40 years. And we get bust and loose played, of course. What's they do at Nationals Park here for home runs as the Republicans out of the dugout to mob Stu Aguilar just kind of smiling, walking around behind the mound. So wow. I can't believe I just did that. What to the a opposing, blast. To the opposing pitcher. Exactly. What a blast by the opposing pitcher. Greg Stubbe getting all of this one. Look at that swing he put on it and just drilled it to left. That ball got out in a hurry. And Mitch, that was probably two rows deep. That was a bona fide major league home run right there. Absolutely. That home run call by WTOP's play-by-play host, George Wallace, and Capitol Hill reporter, Mitch Miller. Here's another first, the first black woman to play in a congressional baseball game, Mia Love, a Republican from Utah. In the 2018 game, she hit a single, the call again by WTOP announcers. But we will see the first at bat from Mia Love. Swings at the first pitch and fouls it back. Came in as a pinch runner earlier in this game. First African-American woman from the state of Utah, though she was born in Brooklyn, but moved to Utah. Takes a strike on the second pitch, 0-2. Nice ovation as well. Swing by me and a shot to right field, and the ball is bobbled out by Perlmutter, and me is going to be safe at first. In the 2023 game, Texas freshman Jasmine Crockett made her own history, the first black woman Democrat to play in the congressional baseball game in its 114-year history. 
new pinch runner here. Another freshman coming into the game, John. That's Jasmine Crockett. Jasmine Texas. Crockett is in at first base. Her first ever appearance in a congressional baseball game as Senator Murphy steps in here. The voices you heard, John Walton, radio announcer of the Washington Capitals, and Fox News baseball color commentator and congressional correspondent Chad Pergram. Another top moment from that 2023 game wasn't on the field. It came from the announcer's booth. A great bit of congressional baseball history provided by Chad Pergram. And with the bases loaded, I was starting to wonder a little bit if we might see a Grand Slam home run. You know who hit the first Grand Slam home run in congressional history, John? I do not. Gerald Ford. Remember, he was the House Minority Leader long before he was the Vice President and President. That was in 1957. By the way, Chad Pergram used to work at C-SPAN. So did another legendary and longtime C-SPANner, Bruce Collins. He was on the field doing interviews during the 1983 Congressional Baseball game. Bruce Collins caught up with Wilmer Vinegarbend Mizell. Vinegar Bend Mizell was a major league pitcher before becoming a Republican member of Congress. When was the last time you pitched for the Republicans in a game like this? My first year in the uh, Congress in uh, 69, uh, they let me pitch two innings. Why did they stop you after two innings? I think this is an interesting story. Well, I had struck out uh, seven, and uh, the catcher, of course, had missed a third strike. And, uh, and the Democrats said that um, they was going to quit if it didn't take me out of the ball game. <laughs> and then what happened? Did they just start rotating pitchers? Um, that's true, except they, they did pass a resolution saying that I couldn't pitch anymore. But the you mean it took an act of Congress to get you off the mound? <laughs> just about as much as I enjoyed pitching. But um, uh, the, the other part of it was that they took one look at my batting average and said that I could play anywhere I wanted to. So... <laughs> Now we're going to go a bit further off the baseball field and right into the chamber of the House of Representatives. The day after the 2022 Congressional Baseball game, House Chaplain Margaret Kibben smiled and offered this baseball-themed opening prayer. So it is on this day that we come to you in gratitude for the pleasure received, not only in the privilege to serve you here in this place, but for the enjoyment of a good ball game, the civil rivalry of peers, and the abundant fellowship and support of friends and fans. Now having fought the good fight, may we finish the week, prolonging the collegial spirit found on the field and upholding the shared commitment that brings us together for the common good. Chaplain Kibben mentioned the collegial spirit found on the field, which takes us to the 2017 Congressional Baseball game. On June 14, 2017, a mass shooting occurred in Alexandria, Virginia, during a practice session for the next day's congressional baseball game. Six people were shot. The annual game usually attracted a crowd of about 10,000 people. But after the shooting, more than 20,000 tickets were sold, bringing in more than $1 million for charity. One of the two Capitol Police officers injured in the shootout, David Bailey, threw out the first pitch. Relying on crutches because of his injury, he got a standing ovation from the crowd of nearly 25,000 people in Nationalist Park. So one of the Capitol Police officers that was injured in yesterday's, yesterday's melee accepted the ball from Joe Torre and threw out the first pitch to Roberto Great. Clemente Jr. Great. Yeah, the two, the two police officers were wounded but uh, we're obviously not seriously wounded and uh, are here tonight. Uh, unfortunately, others are still in hospital. Uh, the most concern about, uh, at the moment, the most concern about Steve Scalise. But Louisiana Republican Congressman Steve Scalise recovered from the shooting, and he played the next year in the 2018 Congressional Baseball game. And to begin the game, he threw out California Democratic Congressman Raul Ruiz. We are underway in the 2018 Congressional Baseball game in a ground ball to second. And Scalise throws him out at first from his knees. The entire infield, the entire field goes over to congratulate him and give him a big hug. How about that? For the very first pitch, he gets the ground ball and throws out Ruiz at first base. What a moment. Look at the, the hugs. The 2023 Congressional Baseball game was played exactly six years after the shooting. During the broadcast on June 14, 2023, Chad Pergram was talking with Republican Steve Scalise 
when Democrat Raul Ruiz came to bat. Here comes Raul again, coming up to bat. He's a gamer. Tell me, did that uh, you know help you guys bond? We always hear oh, yeah, about we, these relationships. We talk about it all the time. Like I said, this morning we're we're practicing here at the big league park. And I see Raul, and I walked over, and we just gave a hug to each other. And it's like you don't even need to say anything. We both were part of a special moment. We both talked about it. And still do. Look, we, you know, a lot of the members on both teams, we got our political differences, but we all built strong relationships because of this game. And would you believe more bipartisan hugs? Here's announcer John Walton describing the scene during the 2023 game after North Carolina Democratic Congressman Don Davis got hit in the ribs by a pitch thrown by a Republican congressman from Texas. And he gets hit. And he playfully (laughs) comes after August Pfluger. Uh, That was never going anywhere. They hug. That's what a game's all about right there. That's That's why they play this game. The hug even earned a replay. And as we head to the bottom of the sixth, what it's all about, a little bit of bipartisanship after... A ball in the ribs, 14 to 5. And now a bonus clip. No hugs, but a song. Illinois Republican Bob Michael spent nearly 40 years in Congress. He was the House Minority Leader from 1981 until his retirement in 1994. He was replaced as Republican Leader by Newt Gingrich, but no one could replace his exceptional singing voice. So, for the 1995 Congressional Baseball game, former leader Bob Michael came out of retirement. He joined his colleagues on the field and sang the opening Star-Spangled Banner. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rock- That's it for this episode of C-SPAN's The Weekly. Need a seventh inning stretch? Head to the C-SPAN video library and do a search. Relive more top memories from more congressional baseball games. You can even see the first one C-SPAN covered in 1982. As the classic baseball song goes, take me out to the archives. Thanks for listening. Happy searching. And now, play ball! For the